I know so many of you have been following this story, but for the few of you who have missed it, uh, we have a really sad situation going on at our homestead right now. We have just learned that our cow Ladybug has Yoni's disease. And for those of you who don't know what that is, just wait a moment, you're gonna learn a lot about Yoni's. For tonight's live stream, you're going to actually watch a pre-recorded phone call that I had with Cody Creelman, the cow vet on YouTube, Cody Creelman Cow Vet YouTube channel. Uh, Cody is our go-to source for great cow information when it comes to health, diseases, and uh, situations like this. So after learning that Ladybug had Yoni's disease, I scheduled a call with Cody to talk about Yoni's, to talk about the next steps for us, and also more importantly, things that you could do to avoid ever having to deal with this situation on your homestead. Sadly, it is something that every homesteader who's considering a cow has to learn about. This is pre-recorded because we had not yet revealed the results from our tests. Uh, so we pre-recorded this interview because nobody knew what was going on. You can't ask Cody questions here, but you can head over to his channel, Cody Creelman Cow Vet. We'll have a link for you in the description below and ask Cody as many questions as you'd like about Yoni's. He is awesome about getting back to people on their questions and he has a great channel and he is an amazing resource for anybody who has cows and is looking for some advice on how to handle some of these curveballs that come at us as cow owners. I hope you enjoy this conversation. I hope you learn a lot and I hope it helps some of you avoid ever being in the situation that we find ourselves in right now. So Cody, let's dive right into the report. What do you think? Well, so we got the PCR test back and uh, it, it was a positive test in terms of uh, detectable levels of the organism that causes Yoni's disease. Now, it, was, it wasn't considered to be, say, strong amounts of organism. Uh, it was kind of almost on the cusp. The number, so you have there, I don't know if you showed the number, but that 37, uh, that is, it's an inverse sort of relationship. So actually the lower the number based on the quantitative analysis of the that sample, uh, means that they would be able to culture more organism, uh, but nonetheless, there was still enough of the of the DNA of that bacteria in there for them to be confident enough for them to say that it was a a positive test that there was MAP uh, active. So, Cody, for we've already in, you know talked to our audience about this a little bit, but just from a vet's point of view. Seeing that result, what does this mean for Ladybug? So I, it, it is a confirmation that we do not have a false positive, which was what we potentially suspected. Uh, not not highly likely, but that was just one of the reasons why we went to the second stage of testing is just to be sure, to be definitive that there wasn't a false positive because based off of the first testing, there can be other similar bacteria that can cause uh, a spike in the antibodies that the first test looks for, the ELISA test. Uh, but having that test result plus this test result rules out that there, there was a false positive and that it is a true positive that exists. So she, she does have this bacteria. Cody, what is Yoni's, uh, this MAP bacteria in her, what does that mean for Ladybug's future? So it is most likely that this will be a terminal disease for her. Uh, the the progression of the disease is not is not something we can say you know six months or six weeks or even six years at times. Uh, it, it really can be very variable uh, on on specific animals. Uh, it, it is over ninety percent fatal, uh, so very few animals can can make it through. So that's you know that's the first part is it's likely you know she's she's five right. 
Uh, yeah, going on five. Yep. Going on five. So most cases we start to see clinically start up in that kind of three to six years old range. And what we would see once they move from their, from their subclinical where they don't have any necessarily any outward signs of diarrhea or weight loss is we see that transition. So then we start to see the feces getting loose and we start to see her uh, not, not able to maintain condition. So just getting skinnier and skinnier with profuse chronic diarrhea. So that's the first part. The, the second sort of thing is what does that mean is, is also for any subsequent or, or uh, animals that are in her proximity. So the other animals or any animals now brought onto farm or born onto farm are potentially in jeopardy of contracting that bacteria as well. So the the most uh, susceptible would be any young stock and this disease can infect primarily ruminants, so other cattle, uh, but also sheep and goats and and deer if uh, it, it can it can pass in the wildlife as well. But the the m most worrisome is any new baby calves born because a those calves can get infected in utero, so that bacteria can actually pass and infect uh, babies in their mom before they're even born. Uh, those calves can get infected, most which is most common uh, from fecal contamination when they're just living their life next to mom who's shedding high levels of bacteria. And then there can also be the MAP bacteria in the colostrum and in the milk as well. So the older an animal gets, the, the more resistant it is, but if there's high levels of bacteria in the environment, uh, they, they can get it nearly at almost any time, but more susceptible up to about age one. The fact that Ladybug has this, was that our fault? Absolutely uh, not your fault in this situation. This would have been something that uh, she would have caught right when she was born or even, like I said, before she was born. Yeah, so this is something that unfortunately we didn't know was there. It's and and the nature of yonis, Cody. Uh, how early will it show up to someone who's trying to to look for it, who's testing for it? Yeah, so it it really is a bit dependent on the level of bacteria that they consumed when they got infected. So if they consumed a large amount, let's say a calf was plopped right in the middle of a 10,000 cow dairy in uh, central California, uh, you know, an animal like that could potentially be exposed to high levels of MAP and be shedding uh, its own bacteria a little bit earlier than one that would get low levels because the incubation period is so long. But typically what we think is is we don't see signs uh, both within the blood work or within the feces until about age three. So for us, uh, the fact that we are just finding out about this now, uh, we told you before we purchased her from a supposed disease-free herd. Uh, nothing we really could have done to change the outcome of where we are today. Absolutely not. You were dealt a very bad hand in that situation, and there was nothing in terms of management for her specific case that you could have done differently. Uh, in most cases, you you would have not known until until you started seeing clinical signs of, of that profuse diarrhea, that chronic diarrhea, along with the weight loss. And then we would have started working through what are the potential differential diagnoses for, for that, for chronic diarrhea, and, and would have gotten finally ruled out uh, all the other causes. And, and that's how we would have come up with a diagnosis. Now she's five, when is that, when is that really going to happen? Who, who knows, right? Uh, based off of her history, I would say if she's not showing overt signs, which we're not quite sure right now, uh, within a year, I'm sure you, you would have started to see something that was pretty obvious. Now, you already talked about the fact that she is going to be more and more uh, spreading this disease. Uh, if yep. we want to keep our, our three other cows, our camels, our sheep, any future animals protected from this awful disease, 
what is the smart thing for us to do here? Right. So if we were going to keep her uh, until until it, she told us that it was time for her to go, uh, you would have to keep her isolated because there is massive amounts of bacteria that are being shed. And that bacteria, unfortunately, is also really resistant as well. Uh, they've been able to show that the MAP bacteria living in the environment for over a year uh, and still be viable to, in, to infect other animals. So to, to keep her on farm, she would have to be you know, complete, completely isolated from any of the other uh, animals that are at risk. And then, of course, we start thinking about, well, what about a calf, right? So how would you, how would you possibly manage a calf in this situation, uh, have, having another one? And, you know, in that case, like I said, there's still the potential that that calf could get infected in utero. But if it wasn't, what you wouldn't be able to do is essentially keep that calf with her until a year of age. So you could potentially keep older animals uh, with her, but if she's shedding huge amounts of, of MAP, there's the year cutoff is just kind of a rough guideline. Any animal at any age could potentially get infected if they were if they were exposed to high enough bacterial load. What is the safest thing for us to do when it comes to the health of the rest of our herd? Yeah, so, and, and not just your herd. Uh, have you talked about the, the health, human health implications no, as well? great, great point, Cody. Let's cover that. Okay. Yeah, yeah so, so there, is a, there is correlation. Now, it is very controversial in the literature of, of the, this correlation. Every year that goes by, that correlation seems to get stronger and stronger in evidence. So I, there's nothing that can definitively be said, but it is postulated that MAP can cause some human-specific diseases, either directly through infection or indirectly uh, through autoimmune disorders. So the two main ones that we think are caused or potentially exasperated by a human uh, consuming an MAP-infected uh, glass of milk are Crohn's disease, which is very similar in terms of, of the, the signs, you know, the human symptoms that we see with inflammatory bowel type disease, uh, but also rheumatoid arthritis, which is, is another autoimmune disease as well. And there's a not whole other set of diseases that, that it is hypothesized that MAP may exasperate as well. Uh, Parkinson's disease is one. Like I said, it's weak correlation. We don't have we don't have a strong correlation. Uh, some people have have postulated uh, autism may be exasperated in some cases, uh, and type one diabetes, another autoimmune d disease. Uh, there could be a potential link. The last sort of work that was done uh, that, that talked about all of it was in 2018. It was, uh, the, the, the study concluded that there's enough evidence for us to be concerned, but, and, but more research needs to be done to get a really clear understanding as to what, what MAP does in humans. So that's, that, that's a big component of this conversation as well, is what is the health implications for your family. So if I had to make a decision without any sort of emotional investment that I have in Ladybug, which I do, I'm a fan <laughs> of the show, or, or in emotional investment in you guys, I, I've made this decision on hundreds of cows before in my career, and, and that decision is to call her, is to remove her from the herd. Because you still have a lot of worry in terms of, of the, the milk that your family is going to be consuming. We can even talk about pasteurization. There, it's not even clear if pasteurization truly mitigates the risk in terms of human consumption. Uh, some literature would show that there is a, um, a heat-resistant strain of, of, of MAP that exists that may not respond what we think it should respond during the, pasturation t the pasteurization technique. And especially if you're drinking raw milk, then which I love, I love raw milk, um, the, the risk to me could be could be just it's just too high it's just too many things for me to worry about as a father uh, to to consider you know just bearing down and and consuming that milk 
So my recommendation would be to, to call her and we're going to have to worry about the other animals as well in terms of the, the rest of the cattle that are on the farm. Uh, you know, you're going to have you're going to have years of testing to get a really good idea as to what's going on. Who is truly infected and who is not. Judging off the fact that Luna was born three years ago, and now we have these two calves that just nursed off of Ladybug this last uh, spring, right up to the springtime. Um, what are your, you know, if you're a betting man, what do you think about Luna and what do you think about our current two calves? Right. So I, I believe that the current two calves are probably the most at risk. Uh, as, as, a, as Ladybug became... Uh, more and more infected with this that is when we have more and more shedding so the the chance of her shedding super high levels when Luna was born is probably pretty low uh, but but we know definitively that she is shedding relatively high amounts of bacteria currently and those calves would have been exposed now I, I, if I was a betting man and just had to guess, I would say we're probably going to find at least one other animal within the herd that, that will have been infected and, and positive. But we don't know until, you know, until they reach uh, an older age that we can actually start testing them because that's the unfortunate thing about the disease is there's nothing that we can test for when they're, when they're baby calves. Right. If... Knowing that, and I, you know, after talking to you about this, Cody, we feel the same thing. Uh, what's your guidance for us? Where do we go from here? Our goal is to have a Yoni's free herd like we thought we did and we tried to do the right way. Um, what's kind of a roadmap for us, a loose roadmap over the next couple of years? Yeah, and it's such it's so hard to parse out the emotional component to this, right? But if you were making as objective uh, decision as possible and you were thinking about all of the factors in terms of the safety of the other livestock, the safety of your family, the safety of any other animals, there would be no way for you to build a herd wisely right now uh, the way that you wanted um, and and keep all the animals on farm. It just... It, there would be there's there's no other safe reset button besides besides calling the group if that is if that is truly your goal uh, and unfortunately it also comes down to dollars and cents you know if you if you thought about not if you wanted to to keep every animal on farm keep all the cows on farm let them perish when they were when they were um, you know, we're finally so sick with Yoni's disease, but couldn't consume any milk, couldn't in your, couldn't justify uh, in good conscience selling those animals as, you know, as milk cows to, to other homesteaders. Uh, you're talking, you're talking years and years and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars just to, to kind of mitigate that, um, that emotional side of it. And they're, they're just, it just can't make sense. With uh, knowing that the calves probably have this, right? Betting on Luna, hopefully not. Our current plan, Cody, after talking with you last time, was to, to have Luna bred and maybe with the younger calves do one breeding and then call them after one calving. Right. And then leave Luna and continue testing. And like you mentioned last time, we talked testing every six months. Is that mm -hmm. a safe middle of the road option in your opinion? Yeah, I think it, I, I absolutely think that it can be mitigated. We can mitigate some of the risk. Uh, I, I don't think that, that Luna is infected but we're we're not going to know for sure until you know we can get to age 3 or 4 and, and be and be testing her 
fairly regularly just for your own right. sort of peace of mind and safety, right? Yeah. You, you wouldn't have to test that often, but for your own peace of mind, if you're going to be consuming that milk, you're going to want to know what the levels are in her feces to have some sort of indication. So yeah, I think I think that is a is a middle of the road safe approach uh, to potentially go with. There, dairy farmers deal with this this decision every single day. You know, unfortunately, MAP is a is a very common disease. Uh, they think that within the commercial dairy industry, uh, nearly 100% of herds have at least one animal with this, and there really isn't a well-defined uh, control m mechanism in place besides uh, serial testing and serial culling, which is exactly what you're looking at at doing, right? Yeah, and you, you bring up a good point here I wanted to ask you before we finish up, Cody. Um, we Our business model with these cows was to create a beautiful little homestead cow and sell them to families. I sell them something I feed my own family. Well, I'm not going to feed my own family, a, you know, a cow, a milk from a cow that has yonis. That's why we started this in the first place. How long uh, of a road, uh, as far as business, has our, our business model been destroyed here with this herd? Is, are we talking five years before we can in good faith really say we're back to being yonis free? What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think I think if, if we're, we will, we will know pretty well if we're testing uh, Luna regularly as as if she's having any sort of antibody response. We could also maybe once a year do her PCR test in her feces like we did with Ladybug. And I think it's going to be pretty clear with some serial testing on whether or not we're going to see any of those indicators of infection uh, increasing. So with her in terms of, of her potential offspring, I, th I think within a within a year or two, you're going to be able to to say very confidently. I don't think you're starting at a you know a five year reset, uh, but yeah, the it de it really depends on on where those calves end up and and like I said, if they're infected or not, nobody knows. So I think I think it's that's what's going to hold you back is if you if you decide to keep them and you just don't know and they are infected, then it could be a long road. If they're infected, and, and this is something um, I might have misunderstood after the last conversation, if they're infected, but they're only, I mean, they were born in November and in September. Uh, if we breed them at a year old and they calve, is there a possibility of them at that age transferring this to their calf? It's a very low possibility, but it is so there is a possibility. Yeah, there is a poss a possibility. Like I said, the you know, they think that twenty five percent of calves um, could be infected um, in utero, right. and it really is just like I said, it is de very dependent on how much bacteria that animal was exposed to to start right. and how long that total incubation period is. So is it relatively safe? Yes. Is it an absolute? No, because there just is, there's no absolutes in biology, unfortunately. Right. Which is a really good segue, I think, Cody, to my last question for you. Uh, we really feel... Oh, man. Well, you know, the first phone call we had together, like the way that yeah. started, I was just like, the wind has been knocked out of our sails. Um, we bought this cow. We spent good money on a disease-free herd. It says on my paperwork, disease-free herd, tested for all diseases, yonis, blah, 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 all these other ones. Uh, and now here we are. Like, we tried to do it all right, and here we are. And we told you previously we had a deposit on a couple of our calves. And, right. Uh, we were ready to finally start making some money back farming, right? <laughs> um, if someone's in our shoes, if they're thinking about getting started, what is there anything they can do to avoid ending up where we are? Or is this is this just always a chance for somebody out there? Well, yeah. In, in terms of what more as part of diligence could you have done, I, I think there there's the potential 
for you to say using a your own herd health veterinarian in consultation with the herd that you're going to purchase and and their herd health veterinarian to have more people involved in that situation and have you know the professionals that you trust to be able to confidently say yes they are saying this is a disease free herd and from everything that I can see based off of their testing results that that we can believe this answer uh, because of the situation you got into it's that's the that's the proof anybody can say or believe you know, uh, I, I'm not saying there was there was malice right. in any of the situation, right? You could easily believe uh, that that you are running a disease-free herd, and if you're not putting together, you know, an adequate amount of testing and review by by your herd health professional, you you could end up in that situation. So that's the only thing I could think of in terms of what else could you have done to mitigate that situation or farmers mitigate it. Just don't just don't take that herd free or the disease free herd status at face value. Uh, really dig into it and and know you know what percentage of animals have been tested uh, how often are they testing which tests are being done there's a lot of variation in all of this as as you've now learned uh, to, to really get a great answer as to what's going on yeah and like, don't and don't uh, forget about your bulls either so that's just another thing obviously with AI uh, it, it is a very small chance that that, that that's going to have any sort of effect but for beef pro or beef producers beef homesteaders that are large enough to be bringing bulls in don't forget about your bulls uh, you can get bulls tested you can source bulls from Yoni's free uh, herds uh, just because we worry about this most in the dairy does not mean that it is a dairy only disease it 100% exists in our beef herds across the US and Canada so it should also be a concern there as well uh, awesome advice Cody uh, you've been a huge help to us uh, I'll update you now and what we've decided to do um, we've decided to call ladybug Uh, I just got chill, chills. You just gave me goosebumps. That's, that sucks, man. I know. It's it's gonna it's been a bad week. I was up at three a.m. last night. It's really yeah. gonna be a hard week. Um, but it's there's too much danger to our family, to our animals, and the other thing we keep thinking about is you know what? We, we love this cow. She had a good life. We don't really want her going over the hill on that you know we want yeah. her to have her last day on pasture be a nice one where she feels good she doesn't know anything's different i hate to see her get too far along where she's actually right. being affected now uh, as far you as you got me all you got me all misty eyed now <laughs> it's, it's allergies man man allergies <laughs> it's uh it's not gonna be easy um you know, I've been, I'm prepping all the logistics for it because we're going to use her, as you, we talked about with you last time, we are going to use her for meat. Uh, we feel like that's a good way to, you know, you know, honor, yeah. honor her at the end there, uh, put her to yeah. use and not just bury her in the ground. Um, so I've been dealing with all the logistics of that, but now I got to figure out how I can actually do this. And that's the hardest part. So, yeah. Uh, but you've been a huge help here, Cody. I can't thank you enough. You, uh, we, we are, we, our first conversation with Cody, we didn't record. This was back with immediately when we found this out, I said, Hey Cody, I need some help here, man. And he was like, Hey, call me right now. So I can't thank you enough, man. You've been a great support. Oh, no us. problem. I'm sorry you've had to de deal with all this. Yeah, it's, it's not fun. It's part of farming. You know, you've been around this enough to know this is how it all goes. Um, I know, but there's so few ladybugs in the world. I know. That's the truth, man. That's the truth. Yeah. Yep. One of those weeks. That's hard. Is there, what about, um, what about hide tanning? Can you can you keep her hide? Oh man, that's an interesting. That idea. might be a nice memento. Yeah, that would be nice. I don't even know where. I mean, we've never done one ourselves, but 
That would just require doing a good job on the skinning, right? Yep, yep. No, you just go nice and slow on the skinning and yeah, that, shouldn't be that bad. That's a good idea. I, I got to look into see if anybody around here does that sort of thing. I, we could learn to do it, but uh, you're right. I mean, that would be a nice keepsake because it sucks. I mean, you know, it's just it's like, ugh, it's in the gut. Yeah. Uh, I, I was up at 3 a.m. last night, like picturing, you know, running through like, OK, how am I going to do that? Like, I don't know. It's like a, a mice of men moment here, man. No, I know. I I I wish I was closer and I would I would come out and do it. Uh man, if it weren't for COVID or something, I'd fly you out here, but <laughs> Yeah, it's it's such a hard oh yeah, yeah. It's the hardest thing. Well thanks, man. You've been a huge support and uh you know that it it's been a big help to us because 'cause we're it's a hard decision, but you're you've really helped us make a good decision here. So I can't thank you enough, Cody. Well, hopefully somebody will be, you know, get get educated, yeah. maybe mitigate a disaster, read into it, learn about it. It's yeah. um, it's not fun. It's there's some silver nope. lining out there. We'll find it eventually. Maybe we'll That's get more right. camels that way. <laughs> yeah, right. I was I was gonna make a joke and say maybe that cam maybe that camel milk doesn't taste so bad now. Eh, it doesn't. It's actually gotten a lot better too. So, Cody, if other people uh, need to have a, a knowledgeable, awesome, helpful, strong shoulder during times like this, how can people get a hold of you? Where can they find you? Absolutely. Um, and anybody can DM me on any of my social media. So facebook or instagram i check all my dms so that's just the the easiest one just shoot me a message and i'll i'll see it i i gotta say like when we found out all this i i think it was instagram dm cody at like 4 a.m because i couldn't sleep it was one of those deals and cody got right back that morning and said hey give me a call i'm, I'm on my computer so he's an awesome resource been a huge help to us cody it's a hard decision uh, but yeah. you, you really did help us make I, what we feel is the right decision, even though it's a hard decision. It, I, I know it's the right one. It, you know, there's nothing absolutely about it. So thank you so much, Cody. Um, I'll, you know, uh, as far as the other animals go, we'll be in touch as future things unfurl. And, you know, yep. we plan on getting our herd back to as disease free status as exists. And uh, you've been a huge help getting us where we are right now. And you know, no doubt we'll be we'll be in touch in the future as things progress. So thanks, man.